somebody there. Hi, Jim Ziegler, the Alpha Dog, and we got an incredible session for you today. You know, oftentimes in the industry, I get a chance to interview some, some true friends, people that I've known for quite a while and interacted with. And today, I've got two representatives from Friendemic. I'm going to let them tell you about Friendemic, what they do, and, and what they're all about, and, and why it's important. They're going to talk about what your dealership is doing right, what your dealership's doing wrong, what you're not doing at all. We're going to talk about things you need to do for your reputation, for customer acceptance, communicating with your customers. There's going to be a big conversation coming. So let me introduce my friends to you. Here they come. <laughs> Okay, we got Hannah Lifson and Denise Chuddy from Friendemic. Hi, guys. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Okay, Denise, I'm going to address some questions to you. What is Friendemic? What is Friendemic? Well, um, we have first of all, we have some of our customers on today live. So, welcome to our customers and new friends. Thanks for joining. And Friendemic is one of the uh, most established reputation management software companies in the automotive space. We only work in automotive. Um, so we are experts in dealership reputation as well as the OEM and that relationship from a, what we now call tier list relationship from an OEM down to the dealer. And so many of you on the call, as you know, you use our tools to ask your best customers for reviews. You use our tools to produce content at the local dealership that person, the people who actually interact with consumers create so that you can create a robust online presence that really makes your, your dealership sing and tell the story organically. Fantastic. Well, you, you, you only cater to the automobile industry. No bakeries, no haircut salons, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> restaurants, no. no. Only vehicles. We, so we do some boats, some RVs, some ATVs, yeah. only vehicles. It has to have wheels. <laughs> Got to have with motorhomes, boats. Yeah, yes, right. Uh, boats don't have wheels. No, they were close. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, you know, Hannah, I've known you for quite a while as well. I know. I was trying to think about when we met, and I think it was at one of your internet battle plans in Myrtle Beach, maybe like 2015 or. Wasn't that a great conference? Oh, it was the best. <laughs> It didn't feel right this year without attending one of them. Um, and I'm secretly hoping that maybe in 2021 or 2022, there'll be some kind of internet battle plan that we can go to. You know, Debbie and I talk about it and then we say, nah. <laughs> you know, but there's a possibility. We did 25 of those battle plans. And that one you went to was called Teach at the Beach. Yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> That was my introduction to the Alpha Dog and the whole entire pack, and here we are, uh, three companies later, and and still, you know, close friends personally as well as industry friends as well. So close always friends appreciate you. Always, <laughs> Denise. Always uh, Denise, this on. why would a dealer hire Friendemic? How much of this can they do themselves without you? I mean, do they need you? Absolutely. <laughs> Not only okay. because of our expertise, but if you look at the data with our software, dealers who use the software system are going to get more reviews, more reviews more often, and have a strategy for getting again reviews from their best customers. Um, your best customers are going to leave the the you know five star ratings that you really want to tell your story. When you think about the average consumer. Even myself, I had a situation where I was online buying six Christmas presents from one store. One reason or another, the screen froze after I entered everybody's order, all the, right? Exactly. <laughs> I, I couldn't press submit. I had everybody's order, custom messages. And so I emailed the company and they said, oh, you have to call us to work this out. I called them and they couldn't do anything for me except I had to verbally tell them, Again, all six presents, all six addresses. So what do you do as a consumer after that? You may have bad experience. You go to Twitter, you go, you know, you go online and you tell the story, which is exactly what I did. Whereas if you have our software instead, if because mistakes happen, if a mistake happens or you didn't have the best experience, 
you send them an invite to review you and they give you the feedback and you get it instantly versus okay, surprise. That, okay, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. Fred, Friendemic sends the consumer an invite to review you. Yes. And that invite goes right to the dealer who can fix the problem. Talk about it. Yeah. Got that okay. right. Yep. You can fix I, the problem. I had an experience a year and a half ago. We moved back to Atlanta and it was the move from hell. <laughs> they they broke furniture, they they scratched walls and floors, uh they they broke my my two big screen TVs, four thousand dollar televisions, cracked the screens. I mean it was it was like twenty thousand dollars worth of, of damages and whatnot. I was and I told him, I said, you know, you really don't want to mess with me. You know, I've got 150,000 friends and followers on, on social media. Mm -hmm. and I, I got I got I got on the review bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Started with Google photographs. And I, I mean, and I went right to the parent company. I'm not going to say which van line it was, but yeah. I didn't go to the franchisee. I went and, and trashed the, the van line itself. You'd be amazed reaction I got. Mm -hmm. So a consumer is very powerful online. Mm -hmm. I, you, you, if you have a, a situation, you know, I, I can get that situation resolved. And so where does Friendemic come in? Yeah, that's interesting. I love your thought. Your um, One thing I do want to talk about, do you want to lose the point about you uploaded pictures, right? Consumers are doing that more and more. So all of a sudden your brand is out of your hands, it's in the consumer consumer's hand. So what Friendemic does is we give a dealer tools to in real time, send an invite. And most dealers prefer text, text an invite for review. And again, if there's a uh, situation that happened and you, you, as you said, you get to remedy that for the person feels that nobody's here to listen. And that was, you know, from my experience, just like you, I felt like nobody was listening to me. It was like, oh, sorry, all this happened. And you have to spend another hour, you know, on inputting and spending money with us. And so what we try to do is get to that consumer before something, again, goes public. And so you can remedy it. it. We also, um, you know, asking consumers for the your best customers for reviews they're going to tell the best story if jim i if i've bought a car from you you know the last few years that i've purchased cars if i've always serviced my car from you clearly i have a relationship with you and those are the people that you want to tell your story as the brand those are the people that know you best so lean into that and let them help you tell the story well, look at this. One of our people in the sidebar just put the, this on the screen. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Rusty. You're right, Rusty. Rusty's talking about my customer service. That's so great. And when we talk about customer service, deal, dealers rely on their employees, and all employees are not created equal <laughs> you know, as far as the way they respond to the consumer. You know, how many times have we had a, a, a representative of a company, not just a dealership say to us, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. So Frendemic makes uh, top management aware. Yeah, you're exactly right. So we give the software to the people who interact with the consumer because you're exactly right. That's where the, the brand a promise is delivered, right? You can't, as an owner or even a GM, touch every customer. You rely on your people. And so as the general manager or somebody who's in, in an administrative role has then the, the tools to see where are reviews coming from, which of the people on my sales or service side are sending out reviews, invitations, and those that don't get a personal invitation. Is he changing his screens again, Hannah? He might be. <laughs> So we were playing around just for everybody on the line here earlier with Jim. He has this, he calls it, what was the name of the product? He has this screen right. in the background that he likes to play around with. So we'll have him um, come back to us in a minute. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to give you, I just wanted to give you the center stage. Uh. I love it. <laughs> it a of cards. You just rearranged us. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? Black Jack. So we were saying that um, the general manager and the you know 
dealership administrators have access then to the look at the macro level, right? You empower at the the dealership level your people, and at the macro level, you have the tools to make sure they're complying with you know all of the processes you have and that they're actually you know sending out the invites. You get to see what people say. Um, they also have tools to create content. So when you know, I buy that next car from you, Jim, you know, take the picture of me in front of the car, post it on your social, you know, the um, service side is really becoming a hotbed for great marketing creativity. So we're seeing a lot of service advisors and the, um, you know, service directors using our technology as well to tell the service story and get more, you know, get their base filled. Okay. What services does do, does Friendemic offer? I mean, if, if I had to go bullet point by bullet point, what do you offer dealers? Sure. So it's a platform of three software applications and Reputation Accelerator is the first one, which is again, that tool for dealers to get their customers to give them reviews. We offer then the content piece. So same in that same suite of apps, I can again take pictures, photos, get testimonials live of customers um, within again my dealership. We see a lot of um, dealers being creative with doing the unveiling, right? New inventories come in, they put the tarp on the car, they unveil it, put it on you know, social Google My Business, post it on Google My Business. And I know we want to talk about that today. Um, and then the final thing is a one-to-one -one video tool. So the first quality response to a lead is a video walk around, a video introduction, right? You know, Hannah sends in a lead or a phone call. I say, Hannah, thanks for you know reaching out to Denise's Dodge. I'm gonna go take a quick video walk around, show you how great the car is, and I, I conf you know confirm with you everything you needed to know about it. Yes, it has vegan leather seats. <laughs> and then I show her the car, you walk around with it, and your um, mm -hmm. the data shows that you're you're going to close forty percent of those leads. Fantastic. So, so you have a whole suite of tools. Mm -hmm. And and what are dealers saying about you? What are, what what's happening with Friendemic? Yeah, I think the results is where we lean in. So when you stack rank on Google My Business, our top customers. We deliver the highest ratings, whether that's, you know, as long as that dealer has been working with us, as well as within the last few months, which has been a you know tumultuous time and people concerned about, you know, COVID and safety. And we've been able to deliver again when you stack rank all the customers we work with better results and a higher rating and more reviews generates more search activity for you more pictures and more, you know, reasons to believe straight okay, from pictures. Now I, I had Greg Gifford on the other day. Do you know Greg? Yeah. yeah. We know yeah. He's the best. Yeah. And we were talking about Google My Business. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the value of photos versus the value of text. Yeah. And ev evidently Google My Business is dominating search right now. Yes. <laughs> um, how, how much are you guys involved in that? We are at the heart of it. So our platform delivers the reviews that power the prominence. So Greg talked about relevance, distance, and prominence, right? Driving, mm -hmm. that's what gets a, a dealer to appear in a search. Those are the three things Google's looking at. And so on the uh, prominent side, the number one thing, and this is on Google's own website, is the number one thing is what people say about you, the reviews, right? Are you responding to the reviews? How many are you getting? Are they good? Is there a lot of text, right? So that's how, again, for us, when we work with the dealer, we're making sure that they've got the tools, they're responding or we're responding on their behalf. We're using their SEO keywords to make sure that, you know, we've got your brand name in those responses. We're understanding that the Google graph is watching. So if there is somebody that has a criticism, we, we don't repeat that, right? We take that <laughs> offline. Somebody said, you know, I had a stressful or I felt pressured. We never repeat those things, right? We, we're very thoughtful and choiceful. Um, I was, you know, in terms of Google My Business, also the photos, we talked about the content fuel product we have that allows a dealer to take those photos. Well, easiest way to get the 100 photos that it's recommended to get of the dealership and put them on Google My Business is to have a software tool like ours. Right, empower your team. You need interior, exterior, 
Google favors uh, dealers who have photos of their staff, right? The 360 is really important. So again, if you, you just said something. Yep. Google favors dealers that have pictures of their staff mm -hmm. on, on their website. Yep. Oh, that's on Google my Yeah. <clears throat> I have, that has been a key issue with me is that there are web providers out there that have taken away the staff pages. I mean, major um, deal, uh, manufacturer co-opt web providers are, are taking away the dealer's uh, staff pages. And other staff pages I see is a bunch of silhouettes. They don't update them. Isn't the people at the dealership, aren't those the people selling your product and connecting with your customer, right? And those are the people that deliver, again, the brand promise. I can say Denise's Dodge has been in, you know, in Chicago for 50 years and we're the best at customer service. But as you stated, it's the people, you know, interacting with the customers that are delivering the promise that I've committed to my, my customer base. So that, that is a great message because I, I got so many dealers. Well, we don't need a staff. Yes, you do. <laughs> you know, and, and I think they're more afraid of the turnover showing up in the, in the staff pages. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. Because there is a lot of turnover, not not because it's a bad business, but because mo most people aren't up to doing. It's a it's a very difficult job to be a salesperson. Mm -hmm. I mean, people think it's an easy job. You've got to have many trains of thought running. You've got to know all your products. And you know, there's a lot of people that don't have the personality nor the aptitude to be a, a salesperson, and, and they they fail. Yeah. You know, yeah. they brought they blame the industry for turnover, but truth of the matter is, it's a difficult industry. But that was that was amazing. Okay, what else should we talk about, friend David? What else? What message do we want to get out there? Because there's going to be a lot of people that see this this broadcast. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to give a plug to you. So you talked about how difficult the industry is. Your own video content, your own training is about the process, right? Like mm -hmm. I, anybody that's listening and you're thinking, yeah, it's tough, and you know, we all love the industry, but I think you nail it on the process side, right? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, you know, Denise, for, for, for 46 years, I've been in the automobile industry and, and you know, the, the things I've accomplished were not because I'm smarter than other people. I do things that they know. You know it's not because I, I don't do anything different than what they know. In a car business, we don't have a knowing problem. We have a doing problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know I, I do what most people say say they'd like to do or just pretend to do. Pretend to do. So you know, you're you're absolutely right. Thank you for the compliment. No, yeah. <laughs> Hannah and I are students of the industry, so I think you know, again, been very informed by by your content. You know, we um, you'd asked you know what else about uh, friendemic. I I do want to get across to dealers listening that. Um, you know, paying attention to what's happening with Google My Business now. So again, Greg did an amazing job. If people hadn't seen, Greg explained how do you get uh, your your listings, your sales, your service, your parts. How do you get them? Uh, you know, seen in Google's eyes as having sufficient content. What we talk about is you know that's that's phase one, and that's great SEO that Greg knows. What we talk about is then also making sure you have a plan for keeping that content fresh. I was on the phone this morning with our Google partners, talking to them about where you know where they're going, what they're thinking, and they called it they called Google My Business the digital storefront. So again, they called it the digital storefront. If any of you on the the call have looked recently in the back end of Google My Business, they're altering their insights and their data and what they're showing. And the number one chart now, when you click on the insights, the number one graph they want you to look at is a chart that shows calls and messages from Google My Business. So again, put together, they're calling it a digital storefront. They want you to look and see how much activity via phone calls and chat messages that are being delivered, right? There's, there's a clear message there that, you know, they want consumers to make the stop there, to choose you as a dealership at Google My Business and not necessarily always click through to the website and potentially get lost, get confused. They want to grow conversions. That's, you know, they're a conversion machine. Well, con conversion is communication. Yeah. Whether, it's, whether it's on the keyboard or, or physically on a telephone. You got that right. You know, that, that's the, the end result 
to the end result. And of course, the end result is the appointment or the, but still in all, the, the, the middle result is the, is the, the telephone. I, I'm amazed how many dealerships don't list their telephone number on their website. Well, we like to, to get them online and then convert them to a telephone call. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, tell me now they can reach you at the, at the number across the bottom of the screen. Are you extremely expensive? We're not. We're actually not. Um, we're very affordable and the ROI is there. So when you work with us, we'll be able to quantify and show how we've been able to grow core metrics like more reviews, better reviews, higher star rating, greater connections across Google as well as social platforms with those photos. I had one dealer um, I talked to on Friday night and he was super excited because he's using our content fuel product to again keep all of his photos on google my business fresh right you want to continuously update and you know show people what you're up to at the dealership and also keep google you know informed as you know on your business and he said i love when i get these emails and they, we set them up straight through google i get these emails i had 1200 people look at this one photo that we just posted you know inside our dealership so Again, we're using a lot 12, of 1200 views. Yeah, just one photo, right? And that's very common when we see that um, with with our dealers. Very common to get you know thousands of views on photos, and whether it's outside, inside, a new car reveal, something you're doing at the dealership. We like the photos of the dealers showing all the personnel with masks on, right? Safety's a big started to see this even reviews safety is a big topic well you can all day long say we're safe come on in but as they say a picture right a picture is worth a thousand words so showing the picture we all have our masks on um, we had one of our lexus dealer customers did that recently and they had everybody at the dealership kind of looking extremely friendly with their masks on and it just again it conveys we're open for business we're considering you and so all of these things just roll up into your own brand reputation. Exactly. So I've been encouraging dealers to reconsider lead providers. And um, okay. I think the lead providers uh, have, have probably seen their day, to be real honest with you. I think, you know, if you look at some of the, the major lead providers that dominated the industry five years ago, they're, they're now being sucked down into the tar pits, eating the last brown shriveled leaves off the trees, you know, because people are bypassing it and more, more dealers are learning ways to generate their own business yeah. using social media, using, using their, their conver high conversion websites, using their, their advertising means and, and vendors that, that can produce the ratings, can, can produce the, the, uh, what I call uh, the interaction with the consumer, the communication, and friendemic is seems to me to be all about communicating with the consumer. You nailed it, yeah. Did That's I hit it? Yeah, right. do, I know, do I know who? Yeah, you got that right. It's it's communicating with the consumer and also getting the consumer to um, advocate on your behalf, right? We all know again that word of mouth. So get them to advocate on your behalf. And it's also about when they advocate for you, you having the tools to see that if you didn't ask them to. So you mentioned you did a review and you posted pictures. You probably all see that on Google My Business now that um, consumers are uploading more and more pictures on their own, right? And Google's asking them to. So there's this whole plethora now of your on your listing of photos from consumers, right? And so when you get those reviews, are you responding within, you know, a short time period to thank them and, you know, show everybody that, you know, you're part of the conversation and even the questions and answers. I'm amazed at how many dealers are looking at the questions and answers on Google My Business, because if you're not participating now in, because your brand is, is, you know, being activated by other people by consumers in the market. If you're not aware of what they're saying, you don't have mechanisms to respond when they ask a question, you know, you're going to miss out on sales. One example, we had a dealer, um, it was that actually, a, it was a Porsche dealer that I was looking at recently. And somebody asked a question in the Q and A said, 
you know, hey, Mark, I called you yesterday about this car. You didn't call me back. Now, we were able to quickly see that through our technology and our team and say, hey, here's a here's somebody who called. They didn't get the dealer to call back. This is somebody who wants to buy from you. And they they couldn't figure out how any other way to get it. Couldn't communicate with them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I recently, you know, I, I, with, the, with, the, with the pandemic and some of my health issues, recently, Debbie and I are just total shut-ins. <clears throat> so I've taken up cooking. Oh, nice. Chef Alpha, Alpha Dog, <laughs> Chef Alpha Dog, yeah, you can imagine. <clears throat> and one of the things I'm cooking is a lot of, a lot of uh, seafood dishes. And I'm doing business with OceansideSeafood.com. That's a, let me give a little plug here. And our big jumbo prawns are as big as your hand. I'm ordering uh, sashimi grade fish, sushi and, and sashimi. So I started to become a sushi chef. <laughs> and I'm, I'm cutting the sushi. I bought the sushi kit on Amazon. I mean, I am, I am, I am all in cutting my own sushi, rice, rolling it, everything. So I put pictures on the reviews of the seafood for Oceanside. They sent me a 10% discount coupon on my next order. Interesting. And these orders that I'm putting in are like $150. So and how I'm, did you feel when you got that, right? Yeah. Very, pretty good, huh? Yeah, so see, and they, they, they did because I because I put photos, it was mentioned with, with the with the coupon for for the great review, this this is our appreciation. Interesting. And they didn't solicit the review; I just did it. Hmm. So, the reviews are extremely important. Yeah, you're building their brand, right? Yeah. You're building their brand for them, and so again, I think it's an exciting time. I think when you know we call that like user generated content. If you think back when user-generated content first came out, everybody was afraid of it, right? Like all brands were tentative, that first YouTube video that, you know, mm -hmm. somebody posted about your brand and um, people, I think brands were nervous. And now I think we've all learned, mm -hmm. particularly at the local level, how to lean in, how to create that, how to take that conversation that somebody else start on your behalf and how to, you know, keep it going for, again, the brand benefit at the, at the dealership level. Fantastic. Now, now, Hannah, t tell me about what we need to talk about that we haven't talked about so far. You know, I'm really happy that we were able to touch on Google My Business. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to be one of the largest topics for Friendemic in 2021. Um, and I think we could probably take up the rest of the interview just going over some of the details and, and some of the new and exciting things that are coming out. Um, it's changing every day and we're even just getting little hints and little um, previews sort of on some back end tools as of what's to come. Um, one thing that we haven't touched on that I think is also really important in 2021 will be our video ignition product. Um, you know, just with growing concerns about cases of COVID. Um, I think if we could touch a little bit more on sort of what our video product is and how we're able to utilize it um, and sort of we're able to fast forward the, um, you know, acceleration of dealers wanting to use this product, given the time and the circumstances. Does that sound OK, Jim, if we switch over to some of our video products? Yeah, let's talk about that. Perfect. You know, Denise is uh, a big believer in this product as well as I think she's even tested it out on some of her own cars um, around the house just to make sure that it works. <laughs> Indeed. If anybody wants to see a video walk around of me with my <laughs> car, I'd be happy to share it. Yeah, we're definitely seeing, you know, it's one of those tools that we've had for a long time. And all of a sudden this year, it's, you know, the hottest product out there because how else do you communicate with people if not you know through video mechanism now and how do you create that that bonding moment with the person and you know the car you want to start that bonding as well as the person with the salesperson so um, definitely it's been a shining star this year and a needed tool for dealers to be able to do you know what they do um, it, and we do find that 
you know, oftentimes as vendors, we talk about, well, we helped you with all of these sales. And I know dealers. Attribution. Every, <laughs> every vendor says that. But what we can show is we help you get more appointments, right? So we know at the top of the funnel, somebody sends in a lead, the call, getting back in touch with them is challenging. And then once you get back in touch with them, getting them to commit to the, you know, the appointment and then getting them in those first few steps of that funnel where you, you lose maybe up to 50% of the opportunity is really where video creates that stickiness and really helps a dealer convince that person, yes or no, this is your car. And if it's a no, what's so great is they're looking at the video on a page that's custom to your brand. So if Hannah decides that she didn't like the Dodge that I showed her from Denise's Dodge, but she saw that I also sell Jeeps, she can clearly go over and click on a tab and see all of my other inventory. So I'm not losing Hannah as my opportunity, right? She's still my digital up and I'm still in the conversation with her and I'm still, con what's it, controlling, but yes, controlling her path to my dealership. Well, let me ask you, how's that, how's that video generated? Yeah, so it's a um, mobile app. Again, you know, if you can use your camera phone, you is at, at the dealership, you just use our app so that it's all within the dealership's library so the dealership can see all the video content that's created on behalf of the dealership and then i can easily text or email the video out um, if i text a link to it again you're going to get the the uh, landing page will be the video of me showing hannah the car she was interested in and links to the website and my contact information right i don't want to again lose hannah and so it's again really with i would say the longest part of that process is filming the two minute walk around. Everything else is under a minute to click the button, get it in, you know, into a mode to send it and um, then, you know, reconnect with the consumer. Very yeah, good. I think, I think anyone at the dealership would be able to use this tool. It requires no editing. It requires no like features or a professional camera crew and set. Um, I know with some other applications, even just online, uh, you know, within social media, sometimes you do almost need a degree to get a video out there. And we tried to just strip it down to the bare basics while also adding like a um, customized landing page that will still always maintain your logo and your branding so that that's always at the forefront of the video. Fantastic. You know, I, I've been a super advocate of video for, for many years. Uh, of course. I, I introduced um, some of the video concepts to the industry in 2003, <laughs> two, <laughs> you know, we're going way back. So I'm, I'm a big believer in that. So anyway, we, we're talking about Friendemic. If you just tuned in, we're talking about reputation management. We're talking about communicating with consumers. We're, we're talking about, um, I hate to say this, but uh, I don't hate to say it. I've, 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 I've coined the, the term CSI engineering. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't think about that, but you, you got to, engineer your reputation you got to engineer your customer satisfaction because because the, the manufacturers are all over you so so csi engineering is 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 an art to stay within the rules to stay within the ethics and still make customers so i i was i spoke at a jd power round table i spoke at four or five of them but one of the jd round tables that i spoke spoke at uh, in detroit you know did we lose hannah Oh, a darkness. She did. Maybe she's oh, even. No. <laughs> she, she did. I saw her physically move something on her camera. So. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> well, well, we'll just leave that spot vacant and maybe <laughs> Hannah will return. Uh, I can see uh, the shadow still of the sky. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to put, put a picture of Hannah on the milk cart and see if we can get her back. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. But, but anyway, I was talking about, I was at a JD Power Roundtable. Mm -hmm. And I said, and one of the things I talked about, and, and that was CSI was the subject. I said, ladies and gentlemen, I woke up in a Rich Carlton this morning. And, and when I woke up in Rich Carlton, everybody knows my name. Yeah. The, the, the food was exceptional. The room was, room was immaculate. The towels were so fluffy, I could barely shut my suitcase. 
<laughs> you know, was, I was at that conference. I remember that. that. Yeah. Were you at that conference? I remember that. It's interesting. Yeah. You know what has stayed with me through that? You also brought up that everybody at the Roots Carlton was given like $500 to solve a problem on the spot. And you, you I remember you asking the audience, imagine if you gave that power to the people at your dealership to just solve the problem on the spot, not have to go into some closeted office in the back of the dealership. I thought that was amazing. That stayed with me all of these years. That kind of that, that, that was a, because Jay, Dave Power was sitting in the, the front row yeah. and this was me making up with him and somebody in the audience raised their hands and Mr. Ziegler, you said Dave communi Dave Power was a communist. I said, yeah, but I think he's reformed. <laughs> <laughs> and it was amazing. One point I made, and I want to make it because it applies here. Mm -hmm. People do not know when they are satisfied. I woke up in the Ritz Carlton. I did not wake up and say, damn, I'm satisfied. <laughs> People only know when they're pissed off. <laughs> they expect to be satisfied and they don't even realize that they're happy. Mm -hmm. To get a good review, you've got to make people realize that they're happy, mm -hmm. that they did have a good experience because people don't, don't know when you have a good experience. You, you expected it, you flow with it, but you know when you're angry. That's why there's so many bad reviews and, and so few good reviews is because people, people don't even think about being, being satisfied unless we make them think about being satisfed. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah Jim, I, I think you're right. I think uh, initially when um, platforms like Yelp appeared, you know, in the early 2000s, you only found people who were giving five stars or one stars. Um, but something in the audience, the demographic that we like to target is, what about the people who had that four star review? Um, what about the people that maybe typically aren't going out of their way to write a five-star review. If you send them a little friendly reminder about how great it was, um, then they're much more inclined to write about it. But typically you're right. If it they're only writing, if it was so horrible, they need everyone to know about it or it was over the way over their expectations. But it's that middle, that middle ground that is tough to actually get to speak up and voice their opinion. When I gave the five-star review with the photographs, to Oceanside Seafood, mm -hmm. they, re, they, re, they first of all, they gave me the 10% discount. On, 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 I didn't try, I wasn't trying for that, mm -hmm. but they gave it to me and they responded online thanking me for my great review. Mm -hmm. You know, which, you know, when you think about that, you know, Oceanside Seafood has the gourmet seafood that I'm looking for. And yeah, I, I would give them, gladly give them that review without a reward, but the fact that I got a reward, I'm trying to think, what can I buy from them and put another review? <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned that response. We see that still half the time dealers are not responding to the review, whether positive or negative. And so mm -hmm. that's another thing we advocate. We make it easy in our tool and consumers expect to respond, be responded to within 24 hours. Right. So it's that, you know, now culture that we have and, you know, so, um, dealers that are listening in, you know, we would advocate that pay attention and absolutely respond within 24 hours. And if you can't, you know, companies like ours, we have people who do respond and respond in ways that um, are tried and true best practices, respond in ways to help your SEO um, equity there. And it's also respond in ways if somebody is having a passionate um, uh, uh, display of <laughs> We take it offline quickly and we get them connected to the key decision maker on the sales side. It's the GSM or the GM. And on the service side, it's the service director. If anybody is looking for best practice, our friend um, Mark Olson at Finley Kia in Las Vegas, he's the best at this, right? Yes, he is. You know him. Yeah, yeah, he's a good friend. Love love that guy. He's, he's so I love all of the Finley dealerships. I, that, um, you know, the, uh, Oh God, I can tell you some great stories about my interaction with them through the years. Those, those <laughs> are some great, great people. The Finley organization, top notch. Yeah. And again, I would look to him. I always use him as an example of how it's done right. And he responds and he's so authentic. And you know, we're all consumers and we're all business people, right? You know, he puts on his consumer hat and 
He does a great job and he responds fast. Respond fast. That, that okay, now respond fast. Tell, tell me why that's important. Yeah. I think consumers, if they have something to say about you, they expect you to acknowledge it, right? And, you know, imagine how you would have felt if that seafood company posts a great review, didn't even acknowledge it, didn't say, Jim, thank you, we're glad you're a customer. You know, they surprised and delighted you with the 10% off, but at the bare minimum, you expect it to be acknowledged. And then on the negative side, what we see, and Hannah brought up Yelp, and this is something we see on Yelp quite a bit, it's the broken windows theory, right? That as soon as somebody opens the door and says something negative about a brand, particularly, again, it, it happens more on Yelp because it's a more vocal audience. When people say something negative and the dealer doesn't come in and remedy it or, you know, try to, you know, at least respond, people kind of pile on. It's kind of like, again, that broken window theory that crime happens where there are a lot of broken windows, right? And so, <laughs> think about it you saw it was okay somebody broke that window i'm not usually a window breaker but you know i might be inclined to take a rock and broke it to break another one because that's what's happening here everybody breaks windows on this block and so what we want to do is put a dealer in the position of not being a part of that broken window syndrome when somebody has something negative to say and again mm -hmm. hannah brought up y'all no, because we see most commonly that's where the the most vocal customers are particularly if you're on the west coast you oh, to make sure you respond, right? You respond yeah. and then you, you kind of get people to see both sides versus people. And you see this all the time on the negative reviews on Yelp marketing it helpful, 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 helpful. And then the next review that comes in is, you know, similar to the one that they read because the door has been opened. So it's our job with, you know, dealerships as partners to get in between all of those, those comments and tell the dealership story. I'm not a super fan of Yelp in any way, <laughs> you know, because the, the negative reviews on Yelp are greatly outnumber the positives. Yeah, it's, yeah. I know it's unfortunately, a, you know, just a, a part of the, there are seven automotive review platforms and it tends to be particularly on the West coast, one of the most popular ones. So um, we, you know, again, we advocate that you, you, listen, we should give you the tools to see what the conversations, we can power the, the responses back. We're very successful at this if, if a dealer just doesn't want to deal in that space. So we have a lot of, lot of ways we can help. Fantastic. So anyway, we're talking about the Friendemic. Uh, I'm going to say it's a collection of tools. It's not just a tool. It's um, a, a, a collection of tools that you offer for dealers. And uh, you say reasonably priced. And I know some of your clients, you, I, I looked at your clients and some of them are in the who's who of, of, of the dealership in, industry. Yeah, I, I know you've got the good, I've got, you've got some really great dealers, so. We do, we do, and some OEMs alike. Right. So we, you know, do power scorecards at the OEM level for the OEMs and their field reps to see what's going on at the tier three level and help the dealers, in, you know, that need it. So. Um, Many people probably on this call have have gotten one of our scorecards through one of these programs and probably didn't realize it was us. But again, and there are seven key automotive platforms, review platforms that we monitor and that are important to dealers. Google now is number one. It, um, we we're just, again, talking to the Google folks, and it was amazing to see just three years ago, they're about a third of all dealership reviews. Now they're two thirds. They've just grown so massively because they've made it easy for people to give reviews. They've invited people like you, Jim, to post pictures, right? They've created it as, again, this live, vibrant, user-generated content platform. When I mentioned the furniture, the furniture moving company that moved us last year, I have put an array of bad photos on, on the internet. Hmm. <laughs> you, know, you know, damaged televisions, damaged furniture, yeah. you know, floors that were, were scratched. And so the, the amount of interaction I got from that, and, and you know, people are concerned about the negative reviews and uh, mm -hmm. a dealership, you know, a lot of people falsely accuse us of 
doing so many things that we really don't do. I've, I've dealt with literally thousands and thousands of dealerships in 46 years. And uh, car dealers are not the people they're painted to be. I mean, I could, I could find some of those people. You know, I'm sure that some of those people are out there. But then people blow out of churches, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so anyway, I am... Can I- I am can I add something to that? Because it's, it's a topic that we re- recently covered. We we had a, a, a not positive reaction to an ad campaign that's been in market that talks about the dealership as being a circus and typifies the personnel as being clowns. I'm sure you've probably seen these ads. And so at Friendemic, we like you, we, we disagreed with that. And so we went in and we looked at the data and we studied over the last three years how are people feeling about dealerships and the experience? And we posted on our blog the, the results. And the results are consumers are leaving more four and five star ratings of dealer, the dealership experience than ever before. And right? that message needs to get out there. Yeah, right. And again, we know this because we're we all work with each other. We know we're all, you know, good people. And as you said, any industry is going to have, you know, a character or two, but for the most part, we're all getting trained, doing the processes, trying to do the right thing, using the tools we have. And so um, we were we were thrilled to see the data. Again, we you know reacted very negatively to those other types of campaigns that say, you know, that you're being taken advantage of when again, that we know that the opposite is true, that consumers are happier than ever with that. So again, that's posted on our blog if anybody wanted to see the data and we traced it back to 26. 17, I think is when we, 2017, 18, 19, 20. Is that how far back we went, Hannah? Do you remember? Yeah, we went through 2017 to 2019. And I believe it was around 4.2 million um, records. That we looked at reviews. Yeah. Wow. So it was a pretty in-depth study. And um, we were just really pleased to see that things were trending in a positive and still are, even with COVID, um, trending in a positive direction. Yeah, you're right. When we started to see it bring up the COVID, I know we're all all attuned to that. When we first started to see those reviews in, what was it, March time period, I think it was the first time we started it, that keyword started to pop in our technology. And we were equally as curious to know if that was um, negatively acting. And we just, if anybody, um, on this call, you know, would like to have more data. And we did an analysis for one OEM recently who was asking about, you know, should I should I be worried about COVID and my dealers and how dealers are reacting and what are consumers saying about that? And so we put it at the aggregate level because we have um, all review information for every dealership across the United States. We have have that in our in our engine. It's all. Um, again, part of our, our product and platform so that we can benchmark dealers against their competition. If you're a customer and if, you know, you're a prospect, we can share that data with you as well. So you can see what the state is across those seven platforms. I am impressed with this presentation. Now, now crawling across the bottom of the screen, we've got contact information. Now, is that your personal cell phone? That actually is a group phone number. So okay. we I just send it to the group phone number, but you know, I'm Denise at Friendemic and I often pick up that line with the team. Just like at the dealership, we want to make sure somebody's always available. We never want it to go to voicemail. <laughs> Please, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and we all been really informative. I hope this is working out. I, I hear the bells in the background. UPS is delivering a, a Amazon, I'm sure. More seafood. (laughs) On more seafood, it might be. I've got an order in. (laughs) What's your dinner? (laughs) Oh, Debbie is an an exceptional cook. Exceptional. Oh, really? Oh, my wife is is phenomenal. She's world class. And we eat a a dine-in meal every night. Okay. Every night she cooks. We're going to have starch, vegetables, you know, main course. Of, she, she does <laughs> you know, she, every single day. Uh, that's great. So that's anyway, awesome. and I've started to learn to, I'm cooking Italian food now. I'm cooking Thai food. Um, wow. Oh, yeah. And then, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm a sushi chef all of a sudden. 
<laughs> I, um, so uh, my heritage, I'm Polish. So I can give you some lessons maybe in some, you know, Polish food if you'd like. <laughs> oh, wow. I've got to learn to, to cook different types of food because, um, and, and you know, Chef Alpha Dog, Debbie, Debbie is my wingman. She, she, I do, I, I do that. When, I, when I'm cooking, I cook. Of course, I'm a grill master. I'm, I'm cooking the big jumbo prawns on the grill. The, the, those are the favorite thing I, I, I order from uh, Oceanside Seafood. <laughs> those, those prawns are, yeah, they're as big as your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, four of them's a meal. And you and Debbie just celebrated a milestone anniversary, yes? 36 right. years. Congratulations. That is amazing. Uh, now you're interviewing me. That's great. <laughs> Don't surprise, Jim. It's our turn now. She <laughs> fought a car a from me. I was, I was a salesman, and she bought a car. I, I put her in the ditch. I made so much money on that deal. <laughs> I, mean, I made... I made like three thousand dollars gross profit on that deal, and then I ended up making every payment myself. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it was Debbie who had the upper hand here, who had the the game plan. <laughs> oh, I took one look at her and I said, "I got to get with her." <laughs> yeah, it, it was amazing. You know, we we were both divorced, starting over again. You know, again. You know, it was one of those deals, and um, it was so funny because my my hobbies were bar fighting and drag racing. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was I was the ultimate tra tramp. <clears throat> excuse me, I was the ultimate tramp, hooking up with this lady from this southern genteel family. You got a picture her family, their family reunion. One hundred and twenty people showed up. Wow. And she's introducing me to these people that have been here for hundreds of years in this area. You know, there there are Cherokee Indians in their heritage. You know, I mean, they go way back, <laughs> and and they are they are Southern aristocracy, so to speak. And here I am. You know, it's not going to last. <laughs> she brought yeah, and she had relatives. You, you really should date a doctor. <laughs> Much fun would that be? Oh, and and, oh, I, and my credit was horrible. I mean, I I I had ruined my credit. I divorced, broke, angry, but I was making a lot of money, an incredible amount of money selling cars. And uh, I said to her, I said, well, let's when we talked about getting married. She said, well, my parents are gonna have a problem with me marrying a car salesman. I said, well, what if I was a manager? Well, that'd be different. <laughs> so I went to the dealer and said, look, I got to be a manager. <laughs> and they, they promoted me. And the first time I took her parents out, we went to this really nice upscale restaurant. We we had Dom Perignon champagne. I mean, we we're introducing that we're engaged. And I pulled out a wad of cash. I, I bet I had $3,000 in my pocket, paid the bill. And her mother said, he doesn't have a credit card, does he? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we thir thirty-six years ago. Yeah, it was it was interesting. We dated for two years, and so it's thirty-eight years we've been together. That's great, fun stuff. That's I have had such a great time with you guys. I hate to cut us off. We we're, we're approaching our hour, and we we got a lot of a lot of information out there. Anything you want to say before we, we sign off? Yeah, thank you for the time and thanks for people participating. I see a couple people left some comments on the right hand side. So thanks. Yeah. And you know, we're always here. You know, we, we love this industry. As I said, we're students, so we're always here. My team is here. If anybody wants to just, you know, talk about the industry, ask questions and you know, maybe get an outside perspective on some some things that you're doing. I love what Brock posted here and you know it's inch by inch and you know it's about daily activities and you know we we believe in that playbook as well and we've seen it work for a lot of our dealers so it can certainly offer case studies examples and even 
if you don't have that macro view of what your reputation is online, we have the data because we aggregate it for every dealer in the U.S. So more than willing to share that with anybody who's interested. I see Jennifer showed up. Oh, <laughs> good. <sighs> yes, she did. Well, listen, guys, we get we get a, a number of viewers on the live broadcast and it wasn't a great amount, but when we put this on the replay, you're going to be amazed how many people watch this show. <laughs> the, the, the replays get, get thousands of views and you know, we'll, we'll pick up 20 or 30 views on the original. So we're going to get this message out there. A lot of people will know about Frendemic before the day's out. Thanks so much, Jim. It was always a pleasure and very fun talking. Uh -huh. Take care. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it.